Welcome back to Behind the Book Book Talks. Hi, it's Donna from the library. I graduated from high school in 1981, 40 years ago, if, I, if you can believe that. And if you had caught me on my way out of the parking lot as I raced to the car and asked me what I thought of the whole high school experience, I probably would have told you that English and math were great fun and I enjoyed every second of those. But science and history, not so much. And now I kind of look back and wish that I'd paid more attention during those classes. Um, science, obviously, because there's so much going on in the world of science these days, and it's pretty much all Greek to me. And history, because I believe it's true that history does repeat itself, and we should all know more about it. But I can take time now to, to learn some of the things that I don't know. So recently I read this book, Children's Blizzard by Melanie Benjamin. It's a novel, historical fiction, and it talks about the children's blizzard, which happened January 12th, 1888, out in the plains of the Dakotas in Wyoming and Montana. And I had never heard anything about this blizzard, but the book was fascinating. It was the story of two teachers, um, their sisters, teenagers. One was 16, one was 18. Um, they each had a one-room schoolhouse that they were responsible for. And this blizzard hit right in the middle of the day and how the teachers reacted and what they did with their children um, made, great, made a great page-turning novel. So much so that I thought, well, I really need to know more about this blizzard. So I went and found this book, which is also The Children's Blizzard by David Laskin. And this is the nonfiction account of The Children's Blizzard which just solidifies everything that I read in the novel, but has so much more detail. And I read this and I can't help but thinking, I mean, this storm was amazing. And these kids were caught out. Um, they had been, been through a really bad cold spell. And on January 12th, it was warmer. And so the kids who, a lot of whom hadn't gone to school because it had been too cold to walk there, decided that they were going to school and many of them didn't even have their winter clothes on because it was so warm out. And this storm, as many storms do, I guess, um, which I did not know, um, came out of nowhere. And the teachers were kind of struggling with what do we do with the kids? Can we get them home? Do we let them go? Do we keep them here? Um, and, you know, a lot of different teachers made a lot of different decisions. This book has so much research in it and it explains weather phenomena. I did not know really, I mean, I knew what wind chill was, but this explains what wind chill really is. It explains the whole process of hypothermia, which I knew nothing about. Um, it has the historical implications uh, that I didn't learn about in high school, such that when the United States decided they were gonna go west, they sent a lot of erroneous posters overseas to Finland and Norway and Denmark and invited people to come to a homestead on out in the prairies offering them 160 acres as long as they agreed to farm for five years. So a lot of um, people came from overseas to homestead out there and it was just fascinating. So many things that I absolutely had no idea and I probably wouldn't have known had I not picked up the novel with the same name. So we own this book. Uh, we have it both in large print and regular print. And this book, because I think anybody who reads the novel should read this, is on order. Um, David Laskin did an, an incredible amount of research and he talked to a lot of survivors. The numbers were just staggering. They, they estimated between 250 and 500 people froze to death during this blizzard. The way the blizzard came about and caught people unaware and how it overtook them and the whole process of freezing to death and animals that were just found days later just standing and dead out in the pastures because they couldn't get back to the barn. And so many of the stories were heartbreaking. It was like such an intense blizzard that people could be 100 feet from their house or a house and not even know they were there because they just couldn't see. Um, it was pretty fascinating, and sometimes I think, you know, I'm not, not going to get into a whole global warming thing, but this was 1888, and the severity of this storm, um, I know we, we often hear people say, well, this has never happened before, and it maybe has not happened in our lifetime, but this is not that far past. And it was a time when there weren't a lot of cars and stuff, but this storm was just so incredibly intense, 
and it followed a year of many such smaller storms. Um, after this one, they decided that they really didn't know what blizzards were. So that's my story. I think you should read this one if you like good historical fiction. And once you read that, if you're like me and you're curious about this blizzard that I've never heard about, um, check out this one. Hopefully we'll get our copy in soon. The order's been placed and we are still having supply chain problems with books, but it will be here. You can put a hold on it. Um, and then while I'm on a historical fiction kit, because like I said, I didn't pay a lot of attention to history in school, but I love historical fiction. So I just recently also read this one, Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, whose books I always love. And this was the story of the Dust Bowl. Again, I knew very little about the Dust Bowl except for um, things I'd seen in like the Grapes of Wrath movie or read in the Grapes of Wrath book. So I read this book and was just totally fascinated by the Dust Bowl and how this could be like such so unknown in my, my history knowledge. So then I've now picked up, and I have not finished this one yet, The Worst Hard Time, which is another um, nonfiction book describing the events that I just finished reading about in this book. So that's my behind the book, book talks for today. And again, I wish I had paid more attention in history, but I'm glad I have the opportunity to read historical nonfiction, I mean historical fiction, and then pick up nonfiction to round out my knowledge not usually a nonfiction reader, but when you can find a, a piece of historical fiction that piques your curiosity is a big bonus in my book. So that's my talk for today, and I hope you're having a good one, and I'll see you next week with another edition of Behind the Book Book Talks.